Okay, this is my new ASO Color H CG2730 monitor. Okay, um, looks like we're all set. This is gonna be a new chapter. I'm gonna kickstart the vlog again, and um, I think the last time I did the vlog was two years ago. <laughs> so this time around, I'm trying to make it more consistent, and I hope that I can uh, come up with more good content that can be useful to fellow photographers. So anyway, I got a little story to share with you. I do some uh, pre-wedding projects on the side other than commercial work, and I had some issues with print. Namely, for example, this particular project. You can see it? Yep. Okay. So, this particular project was sent for print in uh, an overseas printing uh, company. So, I received the test print photo book and I realized that indeed the blacks were a little bit too crushed, um, the, the shadows were too dark, uh, details were totally lost, but the glaring mistake was that the colors were totally inaccurate. And that was really, really problematic for me. But on my screen back then when I was working on my MacBook, it was quite alright. And then that actually made me waste uh, a lot of time. I had to reprint this about twice and I had to wait for shipping. And that was quite a big problem because deadline was looming and um, it was difficult. Uh, trying to explain to someone uh, or even um, in this case my clients that there will be a bit of a delay in the shipping of their photo book. Because it was based on Diablo. Alright, so some of the prints actually had very dark um, atmospheres and it, it, it just didn't translate well when I had black colors on the image and I sent them for print and it didn't you know, translate into the final pr product proper. A couple of years ago, I actually worked on a project using the Phase 1 camera and um, that was a 100 megapixel camera, it's a medium format uh, digital camera and we had some issues with uh, the colors because the end game was to actually send it for print and if I were to send it for print and the colors were not um, right then it's 100 megapixel of failure so in the end um, what I did was I actually got hold of a friend's ASO uh, ColorH CG277 monitor uh, loaded up the images and edited on it and it came out fine when we printed it out so this was the final product actually it looks pretty pretty awesome I'm not sure if you guys can see it clearly on screen, but um, you gotta see it in real life. This was printed on a Canon professional printer. It looks absolutely gorgeous, yeah? So for the longest time, I was working on um, MacBook Pro screens, I was working on gaming monitor screens, and I thought they were good enough, but uh, the problem is it looks good on screen, but it looks bad on print. So I gotta make sure that photo books like these come out good. As in one shot, one kill, or one print, one deal. I started to look around for solutions that can help me with uh, uh, calibrating my monitors. And I looked to external color calibrators. I looked at um, software calibrators. Of course, those were absolutely rubbish. Um, maybe there were good ones, but I didn't come across any back then. Today's episode is really about uh, sharing with you guys the five steps to calibrate a monitor by ASO. And it's really, really easy. Um, you don't have to worry about setting up an external calibrator on a screen. You don't have to worry about putting on um, another tool outside of it because it has a built-in sensor just for that. You know, the calibrating calibrating unit is actually within the monitor itself. All right, so now I'm going to take you guys through the five easy steps to color calibrate your ASO Color H monitor. In this case, we have the CG2730. Firstly, you gotta attach a USB cable connecting your monitor to your laptop or your computer. But make sure your HDMI or display port or even your DVI cable is already connected. Otherwise, you won't be able to get anything on the screen. Next, you're gonna have to run Color Navigator 7, which is a proprietary software by ASO. Now since my room is kind of dark, um, these are the settings which I find optimal for my uh, monitor. So I set them accordingly and uh, if you feel that you maybe you have um, 
a room that is uh, of a different lighting uh, environment, then you may have to adjust accordingly as well. Here is also a place where you can save your targets so you can actually recall them as well in the future. Take note that all these color profiles can be recalled using the monitor's buttons as well. Over here you can review your targeted settings and uh, make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. And once you're okay to commence the calibration of your monitor, click on the proceed button. Now this is where the magic happens. You can see that the built-in sensor has popped out and it's going to read all the colors displayed by the color calibrator software itself. And as you can see, it does take a little bit of time so I'm just going to speed up the time lapse here. But in all honesty, this is way way faster than some of the other color calibrators in the market today. And now that Color Navigator is done with uh, calibrating the monitor, you can actually review all the numbers that are displayed on screen. Now, the numbers that you review, they need to be as close as possible to the numbers that you have targeted earlier in the software itself. If there is a huge discrepancy between the numbers that you have targeted and the numbers that are formulated from the results of the calibration, then it could be the indication that during the calibration itself, there were some errors. Errors could be the result of a change in lighting during the calibration itself. So it is very important that you keep the lighting in the room where the calibration is taking place consistent. There is a small margin of differences but it shouldn't matter so much. The numbers should be about the same. So once you're done, you just close the software and that's it. It will just save your calibrations immediately. And that's how easy it is to calibrate your Color Edge monitor by ASO in just about 10 minutes. If you are shooting and editing in different rooms, you have to calibrate your uh, monitor according to the rooms as well. But uh, the plus point is that you can save all these color profiles in your monitor so you don't have to worry so much about um, working on different machines as well. Everything is coded inside the monitor itself and that's very, 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 very useful because you save a lot of time. Um, well, if you like this kind of content and if you find that this is beneficial for you, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Alright guys, so till the next episode, hopefully it'll be next week or maybe next month. I don't know. I'll try my best to keep this consistent. Like I said before, I'll see you again next time. Ciao.